Okay, guys, good evening. Uh, thank you for participating in the Step Up Latin Youth Competition. Uh, you guys should know by now, I'm Steve Wolfson. I'm the one who's been sending you those emails. Um, I assume everybody here has been getting the emails because you're here. So you, you needed that to find the link. Uh, and I did send a text to everybody earlier this week. If you're not getting my communications, you need to figure that out. Um, if you got the email earlier this week and you went looking for it and found it in your spam, then you need to constantly go look in your spam because in the next 10 days, I will send a couple of emails with important instructions. Um, so with that, for, the, for you guys who are late getting into the room, what I'm asking you to do is put your name and your team name in the chat so we know who's here. Um, and then I will turn it over to uh, Gwyneth McMurtry from the Movin Park Center for Civic Impact, our partner in this endeavor for the presentation workshop. Oh, if you have questions too, uh, if you can hold them till the end or put them in the chat, we'll monitor the chat, but let's get through the presentation. And then, cause a lot of times you ask a question and the presentation is gonna answer the, the question anyway. Uh, and then if you still have questions, we will take all your questions at the end of the seminar. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll make sure everybody's, everybody gets all their answers. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Gwyneth McMurtry and I'm the Director of Education over at Morven Park for the Center for Civic Impact. And we're really excited this year to be um, working more closely with Loud and You Think for Step Up. So just to remind everybody, uh, Loudoun Youth Inc. provides diverse programs to empower all youth in Loudoun County, and the programs actively build confidence as well as leadership and communication skills. So specifically what Step Up is all about. And over at Morven Park, we strive to inspire a new generation of active and engaged community members through free, high quality and authentic K-12 learning experiences. Our lessons prepare individuals for their roles as tomorrow's community members, employees, and leaders. So tonight, we're gonna go through four main aspects of presentation giving. So the first is we're going to go over a quick presentation outline that will highlight both what the judges are looking for, as well as a really simple plan for you guys to put your presentations together if you haven't started already. We're going to talk about the importance of visuals, some public speaking aspects, and then finally quickly review the round one submission instructions, but those are part of the emails that Mr. Wolfson will be sending out in the next few days. So when you see that slide, pay attention to it, but know that that information will be coming in an email. So during tonight's presentation, we have a few video clips. I do have it set that you should hear the sound, but it might come in a little softly. So you might need to just increase the volume a little bit more uh, on your computer. All right, so what exactly are the judges looking for? There's four main criteria that you will, your projects will be judged on. The first is issue analysis, solution quality, community impact, and the overall presentation. So with issue analysis, the judges are looking to see, is it informative? And did you also provide varying viewpoints? So they like to see that you've done your research, you have seen kind of what are some solutions that have worked in the past, or what aspects of solutions have worked, and what solutions have not worked as well. For your solution quality, they're looking to make sure that you are actively addressing the issue that you've chosen, as well as how creative is it? Are you just kind of copying something else that's already being done now, or are you taking bits and pieces from other solutions that have worked well to create your own? For your community impact, they're looking to see have you already started implementing the project? And if so, what successes have you seen or what challenges have you seen? But 
Some of you might not be able to put your plan into action just yet. You might be waiting for approval on something or you're waiting for a specific time of year. And so maybe you haven't had exact impact yet, but they're looking to see that you have a plan to do it. And then finally, your presentation. Are you articulate? Are you providing effective visuals? Can they hear you? Um, is there a good flow to your presentation? Things like that. So the really simple presentation outline that you can follow are judges are looking for introductions, that you're informing others and providing a solution, that you have solution details, and that you provide a challenge to others. So with the introductions, because remember you guys only have about five, well you only have five minutes to do your presentation. If your presentation that you submit is longer than five minutes, even if it's just a few seconds, Mr. Wilson will get in touch with you to ask you to trim the video down. So make sure that your presentation really is only five minutes long. So a good way to think about this is that introductions really only need to take about 30 seconds of the time. Your information and providing your overall solution, that can be another 30, min 30 seconds to about a minute. Your solution details are the most important part of your presentation. That's where you're gonna say how much things cost, what your budget is, um, how you came up with the solution, why you think it's going to work, and those steps that you're doing to make it work. And that really should be the bulk. So somewhere around three minutes. And then finally, your challenge to others. Again, that can be something really quick. So 15 to 30 seconds is all you need. All right, so your introduction, what are the judges gonna be looking for? They wanna see that you introduce your team, that you are providing a hook for them to engage with your project. And maybe this is also where you put in your solution um, your solution's big idea. So we're gonna be looking at clips from last year's second place winner from Braden's Buds. And we're gonna look at the clip and then we'll go through and see how he broke these pieces out. So again, I am sharing the, the sound, but you might need to increase the volume on your end. Here we go. Hi, I'm Luke Jenkins. I'm a freshman at Woodgrove High School. I created Brains Buds and it helps pediatric patients and their siblings. I created Brains Buds two years ago, named after my younger brother, Brayden, and collects gift cards and care packages for patients and their siblings. When Brayden was younger, we didn't have time or resources for fun things. Our family had a focus on my brother's health. I have sat in multiple hospitals and appointments, and to pass the time, I would watch movies and play games. All right. So again, his introduction was pretty quick. He introduced himself. He said what school he attends and what grade level he is in. So he attends Woodgrove High School. And when he made this last year, he was a freshman. His hook was telling his personal story as to why he started Braden's Buds. And that hook is all about how his younger brother um, has had multiple hospital stays and how that affects his family and how he knows it's probably affecting other families as well. And he chose to put his solution uh, in his introduction, which was that he wanted to start an organization that would collect gift cards or small care package items to provide to the siblings who cannot be in the hospital or who are staying home during that time. Hi. All right, informing others. So here we're gonna listen again to Luke describe his issue why he chose this was why he thinks this is an issue he's going to provide some data and some research and then in this particular clip he doesn't have other viewpoints 
that might be something that your project really does need to have though. And then finally, this is also where you can put your other big idea. If you don't put it in at the very beginning, you can put it here as you inform others. So we'll go ahead and listen to his information section. A hospital stay can cost around $3,000 per day. An average pediatric stay in the hospital is six days. The hospital can be stressful for every single person in the family. No time or resources for fun things. Providing gift cards and care packages can provide things to do at home or in the hospital. It is important to include the siblings because they are the unsung heroes. The siblings go through as much as the patient because they rarely get to see their sibling in the hospital. It's also very important to focus on everyone in the family because they all go through a tough time. BrainBuds works on to include everyone in the family. All right, so in this section, he described that his issue was he was noticing that siblings who could not be in the hospital um, with their sick brother or sister, they're also feeling the burden of this hospital stay, that they're feeling stressed or anxious, um, or you know, there's all these other situations going on while their sibling is in the hospital. And he wanted to provide a way for them to have some fun or relaxation or be able to share something with somebody else that they're staying with to help kind of ease their mind or take their mind off of it for a little while. He was really good and provided that data to back up that feeling of why siblings might feel stressed in saying that, you know, the hospital stays each time a sibling goes in is somewhere around $3,000, maybe more. And that the average stay for most children is about a week. And so that's a week where siblings aren't able to see each other. Maybe mom and dad are going back and forth and they're not even, and siblings at home aren't able to stay with a parent. They're having to stay with another caregiver, which could be stressful. And so again, you might choose to put your solution here, your big idea here, because that will lead right into you talking about what those solution details are. Um, in this case, Luke decided to put it in his introduction, which again, is also a great place for that as well. All right, solution details. Remember, this is gonna be the bulk of your presentation. So this part here is a little over two minutes. We are gonna listen to the whole thing just so that way everyone can hear the different aspects of how Luke decided to break out his presentation. And then we'll go back over these different details that uh, he included and that are helpful to include in all of the step up presentations. To plan for brains buds, I met with Child Life at Children's National Hospital in Washington, DC. They helped me work on the program and kick it off. I have talked to multiple doctors and case managers. My friends Lily and I have also created the logo right here, created for BrainsBuds. BrainsBuds has created a Facebook and Instagram page so you can follow along and see what BrainsBuds has been up to and what we've accomplished. I was able to share BrainsBuds with Loud Times Mirror and the Washington Post. Brains Buzz has collected over $15,000 in gift, gift cards, and donations. Be the Change School Project, I raised over $1,000 in gift cards. Christmas 2019 gift card campaign, I raised over $2,500 and delivered them to Children's National Hospital in D.C. to distribute to the families. And the 2019 Christmas care packages for pediatric patients and siblings to homes and hospitals, I raised over $2,000 in gifts articles in the newspaper, partnered with local businesses to help gather gift cards, and partnered with local sports clubs to create care packages and gather gift cards. Campaign to recognize outstanding siblings of pediatric patients delivered care packages and gift cards to several families. Over $3,000 in gifts and gift cards were raised. Birthday campaign in honor of my brother was I raised $2,768, created a Brains Buds club at my high school, Woodgrove High School, 
Festive Fall Care Packages partnered with local hospice program, gathered gifts for over 66 pediatric patients in hospice and their siblings, hosted a packing day with peers, they came and helped sort and pack care packages, coordinated with hospice program, delivery, approximately $1,000 in gift cards, and $2,000 in gifts. Christmas 2020 gift card campaign, approximately $1,000 in gift cards, partnered with Providence Academy. Together, they collected $700 in gift cards and $1,000 in gifts, partnered with Desk for Distance to provide desks to siblings and pediatric patients in hospice care, ongoing to support families. For example, people reach out to Braden's Buds when a child is in the hospital and the family needs help. This happens throughout the year. Braden's Buds will send gift cards to the siblings at home and try to get the gift cards or gifts to the sibling in the hospital. Braden's Buds has been able to partner with businesses and organizations. For upcoming for Braden's Buds, we're going to establish a 501c3, create a website, we're going to continue all of our campaigns, and an Easter 2021 gift card for care packages and gift cards. All right. So one of the first things he started with was how he talked and worked with experts. This is really important when building your solution because uh, Luke might have had a different idea. Maybe he only wanted to provide um, plush animals or plush toys, but maybe the hospital, especially now with COVID, has rules against providing soft toys and that wouldn't have worked if he had started to um, do this. So by talking with the experts, he could really figure out exactly what was the best way to help the kids that he wanted to be able to help. So after talking with the expert, then he was able to think of that creative and unique solution. So again, talking with others helps you think more creatively about your, um, about your solution. In this case, that's eventually how he came up with the idea of providing the gift cards. And it sounds like when he gives the gift cards, they're for a range of things for children to be able to use at home or once they get out of the hospital or for things that maybe a parent could buy the child who's still in the hospital. And so this might be a, this is a really great way. So that way kids who are at home can either use the gift card directly for a specific activity while their sibling is away or a way that they could share once their sibling gets home. He's outlined his project costs and the fundraising aspects of it. And his overall idea um, doesn't cost money. It's the idea of having to do the fundraiser to get those gift cards is where his budget comes into play and what he's able to do during those different campaign drives. He's also highlighted where he does fundraising and how he does it. He's also outlined his various steps he's taken uh, during the project. So he's outlined what has been done. So he highlighted the donation amounts, and he's also highlighting at the same time what still needs to be done. So it sounds like here in the future, he's hoping to start a 501c3 or an official nonprofit, or he is, and he's also trying to build a website to um, better give access to other people about how they can help. And finally, the support. He's listed both um, who has helped him as well as what the project impact has actually been. It's really important that you don't just list who has been helped during this activity, but who has helped you be able to complete the activity. And that's because behind every great solution, it's not just one or two people. There's others that you've talked with. Maybe you've had to go out into your community to your HOA and ask for permission to do something, or you've had to contact a local vendor of some kind to be able to get um, supplies for your project. 
to plan. All right, and then the last step is that challenge to others. So again, you'll notice here that Brayden, um, oh, sorry, that Luke has made a really quick challenge. It's really only about 30 seconds or less long. So again, this wrap up doesn't have to be very long. I have learned that there are many families in need, especially due to COVID, families have been separated a lot more. Thank you for letting me share this cause and brings buds. So here he's listed how others can help out. And then he's also made a point to inform the judges of what he has learned during this project. And that's really important too, because judges really like to see what you have learned uh, through the challenge. And that's why it's called a step up challenge because some of these projects are gonna come easy and some might be a little more difficult and that's perfectly fine. But by telling the judges what you've learned, it shows that you're willing to make changes to your project and that you'd be willing to make changes to your project in the future as well. All right, so visuals. You had a really great example with Luke's project for how to do a visual presentation or for a virtual presentation that he was able to go ahead. He kept those images relatively small. He provided some detail with text and things like that. So in this section, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, if your team makes it to the second round, how you can transform that into maybe a more traditional uh, like presentation. The biggest thing is you always wanna minimize the amount of text you have that the viewer really shouldn't be reading your presentation. They should just be seeing a couple quick highlighted points about what you'll be talking about. And those bullet points are helpful for you giving the presentation because really you're just supposed to be able to look at it really quickly and remember all that additional information. So here, all my keynote was minimized text. And I was like, all right, let everybody know that, um, you know, text should really be limited to the important pieces and most everything else should be memorized. Make sure that your image relates to your presentation. So the color for kids group, this is a really great example of how to use a, a visual is that right in the middle of that board, they have their information about the life cycle of a crown or a marker and how it goes from the factory to the store to you and then who knows where it goes after that. This does a really nice job because it draws the viewer in, but also the girls were able to use this as also their um, memory points. So that way they could talk about all the different stages of the life cycle of a marker. And make sure that the viewers can see your image. If your image is gonna be really small, it might not be as effective because if you're doing a talk about hamsters and I'm having to stare really closely and figure out that looks like a cat though. I'm not paying attention to your presentation. I'm being drawn away from the visual versus the visual enhancing the presentation. And then finally, keep your images simple. Um, they don't have to be the biggest thing. They can be really small uh, cartoons or pictures, things like that, as long as they're connected to your presentation and they're helping you get the point across or they're helping you remember what the key information is. All right, public speaking skills. This is something that everyone practices all the time. Um, and it can still be a little nerve wracking even when you know your subject really, really well. So we're gonna go ahead and talk first about some of those skills but then we're gonna talk a little bit about how to calm those nerves on the day of your presentation. So the best thing you can do is to practice, practice, practice. By practicing, you're gonna know your information better. You're gonna 
spend less time looking at your notes. And also by practicing, this is always going to help when you get questions from judges, is that you can go ahead and maybe you have all this additional information that you weren't able to include in your presentation, but because you've practiced it, when they ask that question, you can pull it forward. Also, if a judge asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, it is perfectly fine to say, you know, I hadn't thought of that, but I'll look into it. Not just saying the, oh, I hadn't thought of that. They like to see that there's some sort of follow through with it, that you're acknowledging it, but then you're gonna be able to look into it later. Make sure that your voice is loud and clear and that you vary your tone and your pitch. So especially when you're doing your virtual presentation, make sure that your audio is working correctly so that way uh, the judges will hear everything in your video. If you make it onto round two, doing the same thing, making sure that you're projecting your voice and also that you're speaking a little bit slower so that way um, the judges really have enough time to be able to process the information versus having to pay even closer attention because the speed is a little too fast. And then your tone and your pitch is really important because that just provides interest for the judges and also allows you to emphasize things that are really important or allows you to emphasize things that um, maybe you're trying to provide more gravity to. You're trying to say that this is um, the most important part of my presentation. Also, they want to see that you like your project. Go ahead, show that enthusiasm. Show that you really care about all this work that you guys have been doing for the last few months. And you can do that through your voice. So just as you saw when I said, show your enthusiasm, my voice went up a little bit more. And also through your body language. Um, you know, by standing up straight and things like that, it really shows that you're engaging a little bit more and that you're proud of the work you've done. You guys really have done a lot of really hard work um, and you should be proud of what you're working towards. You guys can't see this because my camera isn't going to pick up my hands, um, but I do tend to talk with my hands. It allows me to emphasize certain aspects of my presentation. But a great example is that the girl closest to us in the picture, she has her hands um, out in front of her. And if you are a hand talker, keeping those hands nice and low helps you continue to emphasize what you want to talk about, but isn't all up here and looks really distracting. Also, look at the audience and look at the camera. Um, I know doing presentations like this is really weird when you're maybe in a room, just you and your partner and talking into the void of a camera, but making sure that you're keeping that eye contact is still really important for the judges. So specifically for your virtual presentation, there's three things that you need to think about. Your background, your lighting, and your audio. So the judges should not be judging you solely on your um, ability to use technology but they're really trying to pay attention to what your presentation is about. But if in the background you have your cat and your dog are running around crazy behind you, or your siblings are back there making a bunch of noise, or you're trying to do your presentation while somebody's in the kitchen cooking, that's gonna be really distracting for the judges. And they might not be able to hear what your presentation is about. So again, with the lighting, um, tonight I don't have the best light here, but it has remained relatively constant, which again is important for the judges, not having things getting brighter and darker all the time, but making sure that there is kind of the same consistency of light throughout. And then finally, your audio. Again, this is how the judges are going to hear your presentation, which is going to be really important to make it to round, making it to round two. So making sure that your audio got picked up is really important. Make sure you play back your presentation a few times, just so that way you know that it's working. All right, calming the butterflies. Everyone 
gets nervous during presentations. Even though I give presentations all the time, there's still certain ones that I feel a little bit nervous about. Maybe I'm giving them, giving it to a new group or it's sort of a new concept for me. So even though I've given presentations since I was also in middle school, um, I still get nervous sometimes. And the best thing you can do, again, is to practice, practice, practice. And by doing that, you're gonna get more comfortable with the information you're giving. What you say during your practice and what you say during your presentation might be completely different, uh, but it's still gonna be the same information. I like to make a personal checklist and going through this checklist helps me remember all the various things I need to do before I even meet a judge. So in my personal checklist, I like to get to my space early, be able to scope it out, see what it'll be like. If I'm using new technology, I like to have a moment to kind of play with it, make sure it's working right. Even if I'm bringing my own technology, making sure that everything is set up the way I like it and the way I've practiced it. Um, I like to go to the bathroom or get a drink of water just so that way I know that those things are taken care of, you know, taking care of yourself is important. And then finally, maybe uh, getting a piece of gum or a breath mint kind of helps um, break up that, those thoughts. And so just remember if you choose to chew gum that you spit it out before the judges show up because uh, they often don't like that. Also, if you make a mistake, keep going. Probably during this presentation, I might have said something that I didn't exactly say during practice or I might have forgotten to say um, tonight while I was practicing, but you guys never noticed it. I just kind of just kept going. Maybe I filled in something else, but all the information that I needed to give you has been presented. Also, remember your posture and your voice to show that enthusiasm. You know, do some shoulder rolls and make sure that your shoulders are back. The top part of your chest here is kind of out, like you're really proud. Again, you're really proud of the work that you've done over the last couple months. And then finally, make eye contact with somebody. You're supposed to blaze through the room, kind of, you know, look over the audience but being able to connect with the judge is always really helpful. Maybe that's the judge that's smiling or it's a judge that's nodding along with your presentation. Those sorts of things are cues to you that you're on the right track. All right, so these are your instructions for your round one videos. Don't worry about copying this information down. As I said, Mr. Wilson will be sending this out over the next few days. So you can go ahead and um, take a closer look then. But before you're able to, or before Mr. Wilson will post your video, you will need to do an impact survey. And then once your videos are ready, you'll need to load them to your own YouTube account, so that way he can get it to the judges. Um, again, if you have questions about that, he'll better be able to answer those for you this evening, or remember that this information will be sent to you directly in a future email. All right, so that wraps it up. Um, REI Systems is going to be the sponsor this year for Step Up. And I'm sure Mr. Wolfson can say a little bit more about that. And then we're ready for some questions. Okay, thank you, Gwyneth. If you guys have questions, you can um, do one of two things. You can raise your hand by going down to the toolbar on the bottom where it says reactions. I believe there's a hand raise uh, emoji in there, or you can post it to the chat. Um, and if, I, and if you haven't already, please do so now. Uh, put your name and your team name in the chat. Are there any questions? 
Wow, that's the mark of an excellent presentation. There are no questions. Way to go. <laughs> Uh, where can I get the recording of the Zoom meeting? Uh, it'll take me a day or so or two or three, but um, we'll post it on our website, loudonute.org. Um, if you go there now, you can find the last presentation, the information session that's posted and the, the PowerPoint is posted there. So you can see that, um, but that's where you'll get a recording of this presentation. All right. Uh, I'm sorry about pronouncing your name, but you have a question. You want to come off mute and ask the question. Is that it? Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask about the presentation. So we uh, we did research for it, but like, should we just uh, include maybe one or two slides about like that title, like why, and then like give um, the research that we put? Is that like what we're looking for? Uh, yeah. I, Gwyneth, did you you? Highlighted. Did you want to... Yeah, I was going to say that that sounds perfect. That sounds exactly kind of what great or sorry, Luke did is that he probably has a lot more information and research than what he was able to submit in his presentation or talk about in his presentation. So highlighting those, you know, two to three facts that, that you think are really going to get your point across, those are going to be the most helpful for your presentation. Okay, so like we because what happened is um for this I had like to, our me and our partner we had like two or three slides just full of information but then after seeing this one I wasn't sure uh so all we have to really do is just pick the important facts and put it on like a one or two slides saying like why we wanted to do this and all that. Yeah, I think that sounds excellent. Remember, you don't want to include too much text because then you're, the person you're presenting to is going to spend all that time reading your slide versus listening to you. So an example would be, um, well, what is your project? What are you working on? Um, me and my partner are doing a project called Keep Lying Green. It's just about reusing, basically. Okay, so um, like maybe you have statistics on recycling in Loudoun County. And so instead of writing out everything you would want to say about recycling, you could just have glass bottles and the number of glass bottles that are recycled and plastics and how much plastic is recycled over a certain period of time. So remember keeping it so that way it's more of that remembering for you of all that additional information. Okay, so just like bullet points, yeah. Bullet points, that sounds great. Okay, got it. Um, also, sorry, one more question. Okay. Um, so when we're doing our video, like if um, our partner, uh, like uh, if we're not able to meet, then what, can we just do like, can we just have the presentation and then like we could take a video of ourselves and then make a small square uh, of like us in our video and then like, kind of like edit it in the video together because like if you're not able to meet with your partner, if that makes sense, like. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's that's perfectly okay. Uh, the judges will not be judging you on your video editing skills. So it doesn't have to be you know, a Steven Spielberg production. Um, what they're gonna be looking for is how you present your topic and your solutions and your research and things like that. Um, so however you want to put that together is fine. And there's, um, there is software. If you need help on that, you can reach out to me. I'll probably send out a link. Uh, there's one that we used the last few years called B.Live. And it gave you the ability to bring in different videos from different locations into one. I'm not a real technical guy either. Um, but it's, it's last year, most of the teams, didn't, nobody had a problem with it. So however you want to end up with that would be great. Okay, got it, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so there was some um, in the chat with, uh, after we submit our presentations, will there be a Zoom meeting to announce the winners for round one? Um, we will not, probably not have a Zoom meeting, but we will certainly make a, a major announcement um, recognize that your video submissions are due on March 3rd. It's gonna take at least a week to get the judges um, 
to, to view all the videos and submit their score sheets. So by the end of the following weekend, we expect to have that all done. And then I will send out emails and texts and we'll put it on our website. Um, we'll certainly want to want to notify the, the top 20 teams that get to come to the Loudoun County Public School Administration building on March 24th to present. So you will find out. We'll, we'll, it won't be a Zoom meeting, but everybody will, will be notified. <clears throat> um, should the YouTube account be a personal account or an LCPS account? We don't have access to LCPS accounts. So what the instructions will walk you through is on your personal YouTube account, how to make your video private. Um, and what I mean by private is nobody can find it unless you give it to them. And what'll happen is when you make it private, it'll supply you with a URL that you will submit to me. And unless you have that URL, you can't see the video. That's what makes it private. Uh, and we'll walk through that in the next week or so. So you guys are all comfortable with that. And it's those URLs that I'll send to the judges so they can watch um, your videos. Hope that answers your question. Do all the team members have to be in the video? Uh, no, I guess not. Um, that's up to the team. Certainly, I know, I'm not sure if the teams are on here. There are some large teams. I think there's one team with 10 members. So you might want to think uh, uh, on, a, on a team that has so many members to, um, to figure out how to best present your video. Okay, any other questions? Okay, once again, if you haven't put your name and your team name in the chat, please do that. Um, clearly you all guys all know how to reach me. You've all got the Zoom link. So if you have any questions, you know, please re reach out. And I'll respond to you. And remember your first deadline is March 3rd to submit your videos. Um, and Ms. McMurtry uh, said something about an impact statement on the submission form, I will send you guys a link, just like you uh, applied for this competition, you'll get a Google link and the link will ask for your URL and then ask you a bunch of questions to cover the impact statement. So that'll all be uh, together in one clean suite. It'll be easy. Any other questions? I think there was one about uh, is it okay if there's only audio when presenting? Um, it's okay. I mean, if that's the way it has to be, um, it might be easier to convey your, your thoughts to the judges if you have uh, like one of those three panel presentation panels. Certainly, if you get invited to the top 20 presentation, you'll probably want one of those. So at minimum, I would think if you created one of those and that would be your video screen and then you can have audio. Um, but there's no requirements on the audio. The only on the video, the only requirement to the video is not more than five minutes. That's the only requirement. Everything else is up to you guys. Any other questions? You have to be in the top 40 teams to be in round two. You have to be in the top 20 teams to be in a round two. So the top 20 teams will be invited back for an in-person presentation, for another set of judges. And um, after, after the first round of videos, Certainly the top 20 teams, but all you guys, even if you don't make the top 20, if you send me an email, I will send you the, the uh, feedback from the judges. Um, all the judges get feedback on the videos that they, they view. And all you have to do is ask me for that and I'll send that out. Even if you don't make the top 20, 
So if you want to do it again next year, you, you can get some feedback this year. Any other questions? Okay, guys, thanks for being with us tonight. I look forward to seeing your videos. Um, good luck in the competition. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. Uh, and I'll be sending out some emails. Watch your email. Have a good night, guys. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye.